wind chimes for your garden. Two different ways using only one bottle. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Marcy. Welcome to my channel. Today we are creating a mesmerizing blue glass bottle wind chime using both parts of the bottle. In this step-by-step -step guide, you'll explore the artistic process of transforming a simple glass bottle into a beautiful melodic addition to your outdoor space. First things first, let's gather our materials. You'll need a blue glass bottle of your choice. And you'll want to remove the label and any residue on the bottle with a Goo Gone or such product. Make certain the bottle is completely clean. Now, if you need help on cutting the glass bottle, go to my link above where I share a full tutorial on cutting glass bottles. Then we're going to proceed to sanding both edges. And now we're ready to assemble your beautiful glass bottle wind chime. Drill a small hole in the center of your bottle using a bit specifically made for tile and glass. Make certain that the hole you're drilling, your cording can go through. Spray water liberally on the area that you're drilling. It'll be a lot easier and have patience. Ta-da! Bonanza! Let's go over our simple list of materials as well as our setup to make our wind chime. We have the base of the bottle. Our blue bottle already has a hole on it. It's been sanded already. We have our cording. I'm using a piece of our cording from our Levelore vines that we took down. This is super strong. If you have shoelaces, wire, uh, vegan cording, leather cording, whatever else you want to use that will hold up in the elements if you're putting it outside that is most appropriate to use, feel free to do so. I have fishing line. The fishing line is going to be stringing our components right down here. We have our beading as well as our uh, washer. And this is coming from my stash of goodies in my hardware department of my closet in my own house, but you can get this at Ace Hardware, uh, big box stores, Amazon, whatever, it's very accessible. And this will be, of course, our little um, lacquer for the interior part of our glass. A pair of scissors is nice, as well as E6000. And my beading components, again, I have this for my stash, as well as a shell. You can get these on Amazon. I will leave a link below. And a drill is always nice because we do need to drill a small hole into the shell. Okay, let's begin. So right now what we're gonna do is to take our shell and to drill a small hole at the top right here. We're not gonna go too close to the edge. That's not a good thing to do. We're gonna have it against a wad of fabric to absorb some of the energy of the drill. And we're gonna start it off at a slight angle to make a small divot. And then we'll proceed to go upright. and we're ready to go. Let's move all this out temporarily and focus our attention on right here on the bottle. We're gonna take our little washer and allowing for about, that looks about six inches, let's do about five inches maybe. You can see how long the string is that I have. It's about 24 inches. I like working with a longer string. It just, I don't like to waste things, but I do like to have ample amounts of string available to me. We're gonna do a simple, Lark's head. We're going to bring this up and around. What we're going to do is an overhand knot. And bring it like so. Okay. All right. That's perfect. Now, we don't need this part of the string, but we're not going to get rid of that yet. And if you feel more comfortable, you can actually do another knot but I don't really find a necessity to do that right now. And at the end, what we're gonna do is cut this and we'll put a little bit of E6000 there just to secure it. All right, so picture this. This is going to be up through the glass and it's going to be hanging down at about like so. So you're leaving about a quarter of an inch down here, even a little bit more than that, okay? And then we're gonna come right up here and we're gonna tie a knot. Okay, so let's do this. 
So I just took the scissors and I snipped this end off. So it was a little frazzled. And we do want to be able to go through the tip of this glass where we put the hole. Now, if you find that you cannot do that, just get a piece of masking tape uh, or regular transparent tape and wrap it here and go right through. That will alleviate all those issues there. So let's check this out. We're going to put a knot here because we don't want this to be going back up and down or moving in any sort, any manner. So it's always best, let me see, that is, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that should be about right. Okay, that's where we're at. Then I'm gonna take this and run it through right here. Okay, so you can see that this length is pretty good. Where we knotted is pretty good. I like that. Shh, it's okay. What I want to do is now I'm going to go and simply knot it again right up at the top. I'm going to bring it all the way down to where the bottle meets the string. There we go. Now I'm pretty comfortable with just leaving it like that. I don't have to worry about the string falling through while I'm working on the rest of the bottle. Let's move on to our stringing of the beading component as well as the shell, which is our air catcher. I'm going to take off about, I'd say, 20 inches of the, the fishing line. I'm going to use just a regular overhand knot with our shell unit. I was thinking originally a lark's head here too, but I think this is just as good. And we'll do several overhand knots right here to make it super secure. All right, perfect. All right, now let us move up to our beads and I'm going to start with this one. Okay, our last step is to run our fishing line up through our washer and we're going to do a double knot here. Make sure it's nice and snug. All right, let's see how this looks now, hmm? All right, that looks nice. Very, very pretty. All right, now the last part, but actually almost, we're almost done. We're going to be doing our top right here. All right, so I'm gonna do this one more knot here. Okay, so now that we've stabilized this with several knots, I am going to finish off the top again with another knot. I'm of the inclination to put a couple of beads at the end here. I think it might look quite pretty. So I'm gonna put this in here. Hmm. That's pretty, very, very pretty. All right, so let us take the E6000 just to finish this off and then we're gonna be done, guys. All right, and we'll let that dry. Then we'll go hang it up. We're done. Fabulous, absolutely fabulously beautiful.
Let's go over real quick the components to our second wind chime. I have a number of beads and I chose a greenish blue palette, kind of reminds me of the sea or the ocean. I have a fishing lure. I am using also a piece of faux sea glass. Now you can simply take a bottle, a colored bottle or a glass bottle and break it up and put it in a rock tumbler. I have a video and I will leave that link below and you can do your own faux sea glass. We have the top of our bottle as well as some more beads, galvanized wire to run through. And I am using some silicone molds. Now, if you don't have these, don't panic. You don't, it's okay. You can use, uh, simply some cookie cutters or you know you can put beads around here we're simply going to embellish this area a little bit I'll show you but there's so many other things that you can get probably that you already own so you don't really need to go buy this but I will leave a link below in case you want to use these these are fondant molds okay and they come in all kinds of things flowers uh, these are different crests that I'm using there's bees butterflies you name it it exists and we're using a small amount of epoxy the first thing you want to do is to mix this epoxy really well, blend it up well so that it's all one color. We're only leaving the epoxy in long enough to get an impression of our form and then we're going to take it out and wrap it gently around the bottle. And you can position it wherever you want to. I'm going to kind of overlap this a little bit. And then I'm gonna take another form, which is the flower right here. They're gonna come out kind of like looking like this. And I'm gonna take this. You can actually use a dried one as well if you want to. I'm gonna take one, I already put one in here and I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, that looks nice. I think I like that. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Let's take our 22 gauge steel galvanized wire and we're gonna take two 10 inch pieces of wire. We're gonna hold it between our thumbs and we're going to gently wrap it against in a nice manner, like so. I'm gonna place our sea glass in the center I think I'm going to use, I don't think I'm going to make that the bottom. And just going to wrap this up. Now, if it's a little loose, simply give it a little tug with your, oops, you're not that way. On the cage there. Let's continue stringing our beads onto the galvanized wire. When you've finished your beading, slide your wire through the loop that you made on the faux sea glass and secure by more wrapping.
Here we take a long piece of the same galvanized steel wire and make a wire ball. Continue wrapping the wire onto itself. This ball fits in below the epoxy flower at the top of the bottle, but below the flower and prohibits the piece from slipping upwards. You could also use a keychain for this area. Now we're ready to slide the connected wires up through the hole at the top of the bottle. Now take the epoxy flower form and drill a hole right in the center for the wire to go through. When you're satisfied with the placement, secure the E6000 and let dry completely. Proceed to make a loop with the remaining wire and secure by more wire wrapping.